for TTNHD Production Live here with David Clare and Marcus Nash, the producer and director writer of Lost Lake. How did you two come to know each other? We've known each other for a while and um, I was doing a story for Time Magazine on prospectors out in the Mojave Desert and I was like this is such an amazing environment we should do a film out here in the Mojave it's like ready to go you just need a camera so I came back into LA all fired up and I go Marcus let's make a movie <laughs> <laughs> and he was like okay and that's how it started so then we started like grinding out the uh, story ideas and then we were looking for locations and Marcus was out looking at locations and he found this amazing place called Trona California and how did you find it find it well there was this uh old mining town that Dave liked. It was sort of a touristy gold mining town um, called Ransburg, California. And it was what an authentic ghost town. It wasn't just a touristy town. Right. Okay. But it, it actually has the ghosts. The gold miners had told me about, um, wait, what was it called? Ransburg. Right. The, the, <laughs> the, the gold miners I've been hanging with were like, you have to stop in Ransburg on your way back to L.A. And Ransburg was cool, and it looked great, but there was a mean woman who was like the unofficial mayor of that town. She said, we don't like independent films. We only like if you have lots of money. And so I thought, well, this is not a good uh, atmosphere. And it also, it wasn't that spooky. It was a little bit cute. So I kept going, and I, I found this town that uh, was about two-thirds abandoned, and um, the houses were from the 60s and 70s and 80s, and, and like two-thirds of them, windows smashed out, you know, uh, holes in the walls. So I came back and I said, what do you think, Dave? And he's like, that's it. We need to go there. <laughs> there was this one still of a house looked kind of like the Brady Bunch house, but you know, like the holes, holes in the walls and graffiti everywhere. And then a vacuum cleaner that it looked like it just sort of stalled in the middle of the room and they just left. It was like, I ain't even going to finish Vacuuming. cleaning this place. <laughs> just, let's just get out of here. Like loaded up the truck and left. And the whole town is like that. And it was so spooky and weird that uh, that provided, the, the town really became a character. So you're like, this place, it, we can really go somewhere with this because you've got the Mojave Desert surrounding it, then this crazy ghost town that was a contemporary ghost town. Like it wasn't like old timey, it was like a regular neighborhood that had been abandoned, like very post-apocalyptic. And the, the people in Torona were so nice, as opposed to in Randsburg, where I met this mean woman. The, there's no government in Torona. The, there's no mayor, no city council. The only representative they have are the, the senior center. And the, um, the people at the senior center were so nice. They said, sure, come, we'll help you. And, and they were awesome. And they made it very... Uh, easy for us to film and find other great locations like we so shot. These Was were it the administrative staff at the seniors home or the seniors themselves who were helping you out? Well it was actually a senior center so it was like a place where seniors could come and have pancakes on Saturday morning sort of thing and they it was the it was Bingo just and stuff yeah it was just a community center and that was the government of the town that was all there was um, and they were great they, they, they were make all... everybody wear slippers no <laughs> it was kind of like um they still they they had a role there which was to help the last remaining citizens of the town who are mostly senior citizens at that point so they they took their job really seriously and um they met with us they saw it as something good that could happen in trona and it'd been a long time since something good had happened there but some guys were going to come and make a movie that wasn't going to make them look like a bunch of crazed crackers out in the desert. Um, and uh, that's what we wanted to do. And uh, so we started out, we met with them and um, we, at that point we had an outline for a script. And, you know, we were envisioning like, you know, where could we set some of these scenes? And, and there was this big old rec hall there that was closed down. And we were like, well, do you think we could shoot in that rec hall? That looks like a cool building. And they were like, no, that's, you know, belongs to the mining company that owns most of the town. And so we were like, well, do you have anything else like that? Like a big old abandoned buildings? And they go, we have an airport. So we we're like, airport? That sounds amazing. So we, you know, that was just a few minutes outside of town. We drove out there. There's like this old uh, hangars, like a, an airstrip, and then vintage planes all covered with dust still inside the hangars. So, you know, our like our sense of like the ghostliness just goes, woo, 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 you know, this is it, you know. Well, and tell me a bit more about the story. What what can we look forward to in Lost Lake? 
So uh, the story is about a young couple from L.A. that, that goes looking for their uncle. And uh, he's a ghost hunter lost in the desert up in a, a town called Lost Lake. And they travel up, and it's all going to be well and fun. And then their, their kooky uncle convinces them to help look for the ghost and capture the ghost on video, and then uh, bad things ensue after that. I saw you had a snake in your trailer. Is that a real snake? Yes, it is. It is. And I, how did you get it? Well, strangely enough, I have a little bit of expertise on snakes <laughs> since I spent about three weeks with Henry Rollins going around the country uh, for, on a, for a show for National Geographic called Snake Underworld. Oh. So when we started talking about snakes, I was like, oh gosh, I know snakes. But we were way out in the Mojave Desert, and the biggest one we could find was only about four or five feet. And the one I, I had just gotten for the show was like a 19 foot python. 19 foot snake, let me tell you, is really hard to handle. It's so huge, it takes like four people to move it anywhere. Um, okay. Wait, well, let me talk about a snake. Sorry, so, sorry, sorry. so everyone was like, oh, you'll never get a snake and you'll never find one. I said, somebody, some of these crazy desert dwellers, they have snakes. I know it. They're snake people. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody I, I met said, oh, you need to talk to Bambi. Bambi has like like desert critters. That's her pet store, and so uh, sure enough, I went and met Bambi, and she d didn't look like her name at all. She was sort of rough-looking woman with tons of tattoos, and she had giant snakes. And and uh, I I'm I'm not that scared of snakes, but instead of letting me sort of ease into it, she's like, "Here, take this one and put this giant python in my hands," <laughs> and uh, that turned out to be our snake. Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, albino? Yeah, wasn't it was an al albino reticulated python, something like that? Oh, wow. Reticulated python. I spent, yeah, sorry, you know, that, that's for another interview, okay. the snake, snake yeah. stories. Because <laughs> okay. it was like, you know, nothing but snakes for weeks. Yeah. Like, I didn't, wasn't really that into snakes. I wasn't afraid of them, and I thought they were interesting, but I got to handle a lot of snakes, like a lot, big ones, all kinds, wow. you know, get intimate with them. I have all these pictures oh. of myself with snakes. I, intimate know. with a snake, hmm. I, I, uh. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> well, okay, so tell me, where can we check out your film? Well, right now we're talking to, to about five distributors, and we'll know very soon. You can check out the trailer at our website, which is lostlakethefilm.com. And there'll That's be updates. L-O-S-T, no, <laughs> lostlakethefilm.com. <laughs> and there'll be updates on our website uh, as we know where it's going to be released. Yeah, and it just got finished last Friday, so it's... Brand new? The, the, the bits aren't even dry yet. Oh, exciting. <laughs> and do you two have your own personal websites, Twitter, anything you want to say? Well, we have uh, Special Order Goods, which is the production company, film production company, Special Order Films. And so you can go to specialordergoods.com, information about us, and more information about the film. And uh, Mark? Yeah, we, we have Facebook pages and stuff, but. Uh, we're, really we're, we're a little. That. You really want our Facebook page? <laughs> yeah, well, we, I, I, I suppose if we just you search, friend us. You can friend the film too. Lost we have Lake, all sorts of yeah. exclusive okay. stuff, uh, stills and clips, behind the scenes videos, that kind of stuff. Okay. At Lost Lake, the movie on Facebook. Yeah. You just look up Lost Lake on Facebook. You'll find it. Okay. And we would love it if you liked or friended, please. <laughs> like right. and friend. Yeah. Well, it's great. Thank you so much, both of you, and uh, best of luck with Lost Lake. And I look forward to seeing the full film. Thank Thanks. you. It's our pleasure. Yeah. I'm Katie Allman reporting for TTNHD Production Live.